Azam Khan has continued on his road of controversy. Today, he remained defiant over his controversial remark that Muslim soldiers had won the Kargil war for India. He went on to state, and I quote, My statement on Kargil should be welcomed. What is so wrong about it? What are the contributions of Muslims for the country? Why can't we talk about this? Azam Khan was defending his earlier remark where he said Muslim soldiers conquered the hills of Kargil. Khan made the claim while campaigning in Ghaziabad. The constituency in the national capital region is home to a large number of ex-servicemen and goes to polls tomorrow. The BJP is slated to complain to the election commission this evening about Azam Khan's Kargil remark. And it looks like the SP leader is definitely not repenting it or feeling any sort of regret as he went on to state that my statement on Kargil should be welcomed. What is so wrong about it? What are the contributions of Muslims to this country? Why can't we talk about this? He had earlier, of course, stated Muslim soldiers conquered the hills of Kargil, which led to quite a bit of a controversy. We even saw the former Army General and now BJP foreman VK Singh commenting, stating quite clearly that the Kargil was won by Indians quite squarely. Of course, the Azam Khan, they're refusing to retract his statement and going on to state that, of course, that is the bitter truth. Uh, he is contesting from uh, uh, Ghaziabad and uh, campaigning in Ghaziabad, I beg your pardon. And this is the constituency where there are a large number of ex-servicemen as well. The BJP is, of course, uh, all set to file a complaint against Azam Khan with the election commission as well. And we will have to wait and watch to see if the Election Commission will take action against Azam Khan. But these statements will definitely not go down too well with every other political party. The SP leader refusing to retract his statement. He's gone on to once again reiterate the same. My colleague Harish joins us over the phone line with more information. Harish, it definitely seems like Azam Khan is going to get into a lot of trouble for going ahead and making the statement. And then a day later, not even retracting it. After his statement saying that uh, Muslim uh, soldiers had contributed heavily for winning Kargil, uh, there was uh, heavy criticism coming in from uh, uh, all parties and uh, several of these uh, candidates and retired army personnel. And one would expect Azam Khan to come out and give a clarification, at least retract on his statement. Uh, but uh, looks like Azam Khan is hell-bent on taking, uh, uh, taking some sort of a benefit or political gain from this controversy. That's the reason he has once again reiterated what he had told the other day. He says, uh, what are the contributions of Muslims for the country? Why can't we talk about this? My statement on Kargil should be welcomed. What is so wrong about it? This is Azam Khan speaking today. So nowhere has he retracted. He has said, he's in fact stood by his statement, yesterday's statement, and he has questioned, uh, why can't we discuss the contributions of Muslim in the country? But uh, the, the, the serious problem over here is, uh, politicization of playing politics over army and the Kargil issue which is a sensitive one where uh, you had uh, soldiers cutting across religions, uh, soldiers who never looked at religion, who fought for the country unitedly without thinking anything like this. Remember the religion factor in the uh, army at least and uh, armed forces is not a thing to be considered at all. It's the country which comes first but Azam Khan looks like uh, he wants to play politics over that as well, Akshita. Absolutely, Harish. Uh, definitely raking up uh, a fresh controversy there. But uh, we also understand that the BJP is all set to file a complaint against him. BJP is all set to file a, ca a complaint against him. Uh, remember, the former army chief, uh, retired uh, General V.K. Singh, uh, is uh, their candidate. And uh, he, he has also issued a statement saying Indians won the Kargil war, not people from one or another community. So again, reiterating that stand that uh, there is never... Religion is never discussed over there. It's the country which comes first. And he goes on to say, proud of our army. Muslims have been in forefront of defending country in Kargil too. But Azam Khan's comment is deplorable. I think our army is too great and proud to be affected by comments of people like Azam Khan. So clearly, the BJP has decided to take on him. But uh, uh, Samajwadi Party, remember, is still sticking to uh, Azam Khan and uh, supporting Azam Khan over this issue. Uh, Mulan Singh's brother, Shufal Yadav, has said that uh, Muslims have sacrificed a lot and... Uh, when, the, when in society it is ignored, people will speak and we are living in a democracy. So really, Azam Khan and the SP have almost uh, stirred a hornet's nest and uh, this definitely is not the last that we have heard in this issue, Akshita.
Absolutely, Harish. Thank you so much for joining us with all that information. But uh, Azam Khan refusing to retract a statement, uh, in fact, remaining rather defined there. The SP leader has once again gone on to state that what is so wrong about his statement and that it should be welcomed. Uh, in all likelihood, the BJP will take this to the notice of the Election Commission, who will not spare him and not waste any time in going ahead and taking action against him. And well, two factions of the BJP have fought with each other in Mysore. The clash took place when BJP candidate Pratap Simha was campaigning at JP Nagar. The clash happened as an ex-KJP member, Rajiv, was also campaigning for the BJP. Rajiv had contested against the BJP candidate during the assembly elections. After his return, some of them in the BJP said that they were not very happy about Rajiv being a part of the BJP and this led to a clash in the area. Well, uh, quite a bit of ruckus being uh, witnessed there in Mysore when it was supposed to be a peaceful campaign with uh, all BJP workers coming together to campaign for Pratap Simha, the BJP candidate from Mysore. Things turned ugly when one person, a former KJP uh, leader, Rajiv, came out to can a campaign for uh, Pratap Simha. Clearly a lot of the BJP members who were present there were not too happy with Rajiv being present considering that he had contested against uh, uh, Pratap Simha in the assembly elections and this led to a clash between the BJP workers as well as Rajiv supporters. Well, it is understood that Rajiv uh, was part of the KJP and had even contested in the uh, uh, last assembly elections. And this is what has irked the BJP. Two factions is what the BJP has been split into now. Uh, some of them against Rajiv and other supporters of the former KJP leader. But this is what led to the fight that took place. Uh, but things soon calmed down as several BJP workers came together to appease the glot. And well, it's not just the election officials who are on a drive to seize materials meant to woo voters. Today, the Congress workers nabbed a postman who was distributing pamphlets of JDS candidate Prabhakar Reddy in Ramnagra. Uh, trouble for that particular postman there who was uh, nabbed uh, by none other than Congress workers themselves. It is understood that this particular postman was caught uh, going ahead and distributing pamphlets of uh, the JDS uh, and uh, this was uh, noted by the Congress workers who immediately went ahead and uh, questioned him about the same. He was distributing pamphlets of JDS candidate Prabhakar Reddy in Ramnagra. And in the guise of going ahead and delivering post, this particular man was going ahead and distributing JDS pamphlets. My colleague Arun joins us with more information. Arun, what more do we know about this particular case? That's right, Akshita. A case of uh, brazenly using uh, public office for uh, doing some kind of ele electoral campaigning. Remember, this particular person in question is a post of is a postman, so he has access to virtually every door, so to speak. And uh, he was, in fact, caught uh, carrying a huge bundle of pamphlets and uh, propaganda material on behalf of the JDS candidate Prabhakar Reddy. And uh, he has been caught and uh, he's been uh, now sent to the police custody because uh, clearly this is a violation, very severe violation of uh, election code of conduct which clearly mandates that only uh, private people could probably go and solicit uh, votes on behalf of a particular party or a leader and in this particular case the person in question happens to be a government servant. So there is a clear violation. Government should uh, be apolitical. It should not participate in any kind of uh, electioneering process barring the process of conducting the elections. In this particular case, this man was found to be uh, involved in campaigning. So it's a very gross violation of the existing uh, uh, norms relating to elections, uh, Akshita. 
Right, Arun, thank you so much for joining us with uh, all that information. But of course, uh, a postman being caught red-handed by Congress workers <laughs> distributing <laughs> pamphlets of uh, JDS candidate Prabhakar Reddy in <laughs> Ramnagara. <laughs> And moving on, shocking details have emerged on the Gulbarga shootout. The much-awaited CID probe report revealed that Malikarjun Bande was shot dead with the police service revolver. The service revolver belonged to police sub-inspector Murali. The revolver had fallen down during the encounter and was picked up by Rowdy Sheeter Munna. The Rowdy Sheeter used the same weapon to target Malikarjun Bande. The bullet went through Bande's head and got lodged in the choke of the tube light. But let's listen in to what Malik Arjun Bande's wife had to say with regard to the CBI probe report. Adar nana munche hairatara idda adhe reporte bande the. Na auri galam munche ne gatta gitta maga. TV maka Europe bande aur the telel gunda police the gunda da aur sa yalla sajja hogi lan thar adhe reporta thara. Adar COD aur vishesha vagi yeni tanikya mardro. Yau gunda batu yel hoy tu yen hoy tu murli aur vada gitter bhi murli aur ghatte la. Yuri Bandi Karjan Bandari Ak telling Nere Vagi Gundhatu, Nana Pula Vishesha Tanika Madantan Yeladrubi, our Kotila other Nan COD report Sarkar Ken Kotara, other than one copy Kudli, other copy Nord Kondi, Nan Vishesh Yena Yen Tanika Abeku, Yen report character than Nilan and Hatching Yurane Amel Koti. Uh, Malika Arjun Bandi's uh, wife, uh, they're going on to state that this is exactly what she alleged, that there was uh, a role played by the police. Uh, but uh, the CID report only raising more uh, questions than giving answers more than anything else. Everyone questioning what was the role uh, that was played by the cops, considering that it has been proven that it was a police service revolver that led to the death of Malika Arjun Bandi. And will the BCCI today approach to the Supreme Court seeking permission to examine the audio recordings of MS Dhoni and former BCCI President N. Srinivasan? It is seeking clarification of deposition they made before the Justice Mukul Mudgal Committee that is investigating into the IPL betting and spot fixing scandal. The move by the cricketing body comes in the wake of a controversy over the Epic's court panel holding that Srinivasan and Dhoni lied over the role of Guru Nath Mayapan in Chennai's Super Kings. Senior advocate Harish Salve had earlier accused Dhoni of lying about the role of Srinivasan's son-in-law Guru Nath Mayapan, whose role in IPL betting has been proved. Well, uh, in fact, uh, the BCCI are trying to ensure that they do get the straight uh, record here more than anything else. After the Supreme Court hearing, several questions have been raised about the statements given to the Justice Mukul Mudgal Committee. And hence, uh, the BCCI requesting uh, the Supreme Court that they be given access to the statements made by MS Dhoni and Srinivasan.